stuff. Uh, so I'm going I'm to actually build on one of your points there. Uh, one of the questions that sadly wasn't uh, one of the most popular ones in our uh, question rating system, but I think it's really important, is the notion of open source and whether it's uh, pro-capitalism or anti-capitalism. Uh, there are these people who have asserted open source software is anti-capitalist. Uh, now, I think we'll probably have a very... Uh, uh, certain perspective on that uh, in this panel, but it's uh, uh, certainly worthwhile to have that discussion, and especially in a down economy. So uh, you know, maybe Don, would you like to start the discussion about uh, uh, open source? Is it pro-capitalist sure. or...? or uh, so I would definitely fall on the pro-capitalist side there. Um, so, you know, I, 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 the best explanation I've ever heard of this is a gentleman by the name of Brent Williams. Um, and, and, and he points out that there's three ways for a company to increase its value. And there's only three ways for a company to increase its value. Number one, grow its revenue. Number two, decrease its cost. And number three, uh, increase the multiple that Wall Street assigns, assigns to the value of the company based on some other intrinsic factor. And open source can help you do all three of those things, right? So um, many of us know of open source as a great way to reduce costs because we can get uh, really good software for free or for very low cost uh, compared to, to some other offerings. Uh, we know that it can drive revenue. There's, there's hundreds and thousands of businesses that uh, uh, derive a lot of uh, revenue off of their open source offerings, Ingress being, being a great example of that. Uh, and there's lots of examples of companies that, who, by virtue of promoting themselves as uh, very active participants in open source, have greatly increased their multiple on Wall Street. And a good example of that is a company called Actuate. Mm -hmm. uh, by participating heavily in open source, by, by, by creating the BERT project, um, they've sh shown to Wall Street how agile they can be in, in their uh, business segment. Thanks, Don. So very pro-capitalist. Um, and now, Mike, you have a really interesting background because you've worked with nonprofits, you've worked with government, uh, you've uh, been uh, you know, an entrepreneur, uh, you know, paying the salary, paying the mortgage on open source. So maybe you have a uh, perspective you'd like to share uh, your thoughts on that. I, I'd say that that it, it's not intrinsically capitalist, that, that it, it has um, opportunities, but I, I think that, that it does change capitalism in that it provides an opportunity for collaboration which is generally not seen as, as, as being something that, that capitalism does. I think it challenges capitalism to look at collaboration and standards uh, which for the, long, for the longest period of time have been things that you don't want to go off and you develop on an open standard. Microsoft is still struggling with this. They want to go off and, and tweak, you know, do XML but do it their way and have everyone follow their lead. And there's still a lot of people who are are following that <coughs> that model of, of, of trying to go off and, and be the standard and not to um, endorse a standard and not to, to share, but to have everyone else would come on to their bandwagon. So so I think that, um, that it's, it's challenging both the collaboration and open standards of participation are, are, are a challenge for capitalism. Dave, uh, your perspective, especially in the geospatial industry where you have considerable experience. Uh, yeah, so I would say, um, yeah, obviously I think it is pro cap, but, but, but I, I think what it really does is it levels a playing field. I think open source has a way of, of achieving that. Um, and, and the best way I can sort of describe it is just from our own experience. Um, I, I look at some of the things that we're doing and bringing the market uh, commercially and, and even say with components that are very proprietary to ourselves. Um, to start from that from scratch and build up all the components and pieces we would need right. to do is a huge investment, right? So, so here we are, a company um, that is 10 employees, not very big, it's a little company, and yet, you know, we have an international presence. I mean, we sell to America, we sell to Europe, we sell around the world, we have partners around the world. Kind of on the way that, uh, that, that, that I mean, that we were talking about before in the sense that it's because of our association with open source, we have a relationship, we have a recognition. I know I traveled to Thailand a few years ago, 
I don't know any of these people, and all of a sudden they all knew me, you know. So, but it's just that association with open source and leadership, which with a small company we can achieve, just because you can get such a scales of visibility on the web. Um, uh, secondly, I mean, the cost of us for to build the solutions we build is tremendously less, and then the flexibility we have with ten people, we can capitalize on this worldwide audience of developers, um, and even tap into them because we know them, and you know, so we actually need core expertise in a very specific thing. We can go contract them for one day and get that piece we need. So it, it means for us, you know, it, if you are saying you're just not going to use open source technology, period, think of all the investment in very specific expertise a company has to have. Mm -hmm. And not only, you know, is it investment in time and energy, it's the organizational structure and the total inflexibility that comes with that because of science that comes with it. So, so it really levels the playing field in the capitalist phase. I think it's very good for business. In fact, I think it makes business better. You know, that's really what it boils down to um, because it introduces competitive forces that just weren't existing before. Since, now Jean, your perspective in the government, um, do you find that uh, you know, open source helps uh, give leverage uh, in dealing with companies and in terms of uh, business value, in terms of you know, saving money and uh, you know, not investing multiple times in the same software across the government? What, what, what are your experiences and thoughts on that? Uh, well, I haven't been a part of large acquisitions to, that, that would you know, typically be good illustrations for that, but on a smaller scale, uh, I know that it's been used a lot of place uh, and, and where it's been used for particularly to, to prove, uh, proof of concept, uh, to test something uh, because of the, the low cost of entry. Uh, and what often will happen is that once you've proven that it works, uh, if your business case supports continuing with open source, uh, sometimes they actually do continue with with open source solution. Maybe not the same that they started with, but mm -hmm. uh, it tends to prove itself. Uh, not always, you know. It's Roger, what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't repeat. There's a lot of great points being made. Um, I do think it's important that to say that open source has a place for people who don't have a commercial motive, who are not trying to drive, you know, a capitalist agenda, and that the ability to coexist between people with very different motivations is one of the wonderful things about open source. Um, having said that, you know, I'm running a, business, a commercial open source company, so I spend most of my time sort of thinking about that aspect. Um, but it's important that as we think about what we do in the community, our licensing and so on, that we, we make it a very open, inclusive uh, tent. Um, I think it is essential for open source to realize its full potential that there are successful commercial open source companies. Uh, without that, I think it will tend to be marginalized. And, and I think that, yes, it lowers the barriers to entry, it allows entrepreneurs to get started more quickly, more inexpensively. Um, it provides uh, competition to monopolies who haven't had competition for a long time. Um, and that's all absolutely essential. And if you actually take a look at the kind of funding that, uh, if you take Silicon Valley, for example, I just happen to know it better than, than the, the equivalent here, and you look at the size of investments required to get software companies off the ground now compared to 15, 20 years ago, there's just no comparison. And they get a great example. But, but you'll see it in the size of venture investments. So it lowers the barrier to entry in terms of cost, but also allows people to compete much more quickly because you build on the shoulders of the people that came before you. Yeah. So that's echoing some of those key points, I think, uh, you know, the uh, innovation, time to market, uh, sharing costs and risks across the open source ecosystem are all uh, really uh, useful and not just to for-profit companies but also allows uh, nonprofits and community to come together and collaborate in a, in a predictable way.